Hello, everyone, and welcome to our ongoing uh, webinars in the Science Sharing series. Before we start, Phil Schumacher is going to be giving our uh, talk today on Can KDP Help Identify Precipitation Type Changeover? And for those that are on GoToMeeting, I'd like to uh, have you take a, a poll just real quick and see if you are using a KDP yet. So let's go ahead, and it will come up on your screen here in a moment. And we'll give you about about 30 seconds or so to answer. The results, uh, Phil, 60% say yes, they have. But uh, a good uh, minority said 40%. So good thing uh, everybody that that 40% are here today. OK, Phil, it's all yours. OK, hey, thanks, John. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming on uh, today for this noon, for this noon talk. Uh, obviously, uh, with the Arctic air blast, this isn't something you may have to worry about unless you're in the Ohio Valley over the next few weeks. But um, it's something that we looked at last year. My staff and I noticed in one case, and I thought I'd just share it with you. It was actually something I planned to do for a storm of the month with the WDTB group, but um, obviously that was ended in May, unfortunately. So um, you know, for us, recognizing precipitation type or the changing in precipitation type going from snow to rain or snow to freezing rain can be critical. You know, being able to tell people that that is going to happen even in 15 or 30 minutes of lead time um, can be really critical to having people take actions that we want them to to protect, save life and property. Previous training that we have had with um, from the training center really focused on using DDP reflectivity and correlation coefficient for precipitation type in winter, um, and that's because for Reflectivity, water coats ice crystals that actually increase reflectivity. Different shapes when you have both water and ice crystals in that melting layer increases ZDP. And also the different shapes also reduce the correlation coefficient. So those three parameters were seen as being the best at being able to identify when you were going from all snow to transitioning to uh, rain or a mix of rain and snow or freezing rain if it's cold enough at the surface. And KDP was really taught to be a measure of the amount of liquid water in the sample. But can it also help us recognizing melting ice crystals? So what I'm going to do is go through an event here. And unfortunately, it just shows how our spring was. It, this is actually from May 1st, um, an event with snow. Um, and I'm just going to go through about an hour's worth of, of radar pictures. Um, I'm not going to have all the answers here, but hopefully it just kind of show what we saw and a little bit of what we tried to do to verify it. And, and then I think more cases can really help us out. So what you're looking at here is a radar picture from our radar. The radar is sitting right here over Sioux Falls. Um, there's this band of snow just to our east. And you can see that um, there is an area where there's slightly higher reflectivity, a little bit higher ZDR. Um, in the lower left is correlation, co or Z sorry, KDP. Um, there's nothing really there, um, maybe a little bit higher, but it's pretty much noise in that area. And you can see in most places the CC is up around 0.99 or higher, except for a small area right along the South Dakota-Iowa border. So if we go ahead 10 minutes here, you can see this area of higher reflectivity is expanded to the southeast of Sioux Falls here, better than 30, 35 dBZ sitting here. And you can see, though, that the ZDR in general is still generally fairly low, less than 0.5, except for a little spackling to the south here. But what I want to point out is this area you can begin to see in um, south of Sioux Falls where it's beginning to get more speckled looking on the KDP. And so this is an area where it has very high reflectivity, so it's likely not a signal to noise ratio issue. Um, and it's, it's just a small area here. And the CC is relatively unchanged from before, generally about 0.99 or so. But Overall, you'd still be saying it's generally all, all snow across the area. So if we go ahead to um, 14Z here, you can see that the reflectivity is beginning to increase um, south of Sioux Falls in southern Lincoln County, South Dakota, up towards 40, 45 dBZ. And you can also see that in that same area, you can see more uh, noise or speckling in the KDP features. And that's very different from what you see at the edges of the KDP, where it's the smooth gradient that, you know, which is probably a sign of a higher signal-to-noise ratio. Um, in this case, it's much more speckled and maybe 
um, than what we saw. And you're starting to get higher values of KDP in here. But notice that both the ZDR and the CC both generally would just say that it's, it's all snow yet. So if we go ahead and about nine minutes later, we see our, our reflectivity continuing to increase across south of Sioux Falls, up to 50 dBZ now. But notice how our KDP is now becoming more speckled across this high area of higher reflectivity. You know, probably on approaching, you know, um, one or so more bright colors that eight of one, one degree per kilometer um, in this area. And notice that in that same area where it's most speckled along the Missouri, uh, Big Sioux River, that there is, CC still remains very high, around 0.9. You do have a small area just to the east of Sioux Falls where it's dropped, which may be indicating some mix. And notice that the ZDR continues to be fairly low. So in general, if you use the first three pictures, you'd say that it's primarily all snow yet, maybe a mixing, beginning to mix with a little bit of rain or water droplets um, along the Iowa, south, uh, Iowa, Minnesota border. But the KDP would indicate that there may be something else going on across a larger area of this band. So if we go ahead four minutes later, you can see that, again, the reflectivity continues to increase, as you'd expect if you were getting water-coated snowflakes. And the KDP continues to become more noisier or speckled, increase um, in, this, in that same area. And so what getting to think is happening is that perhaps what we're seeing is that because there's water droplets on the, on the snowflakes, that it may be actually allowing KDP to increase in values due to the effect of those water droplets on the snow. And that's happening before you're seeing actual full water drops. Um, full melting of the snowflakes, because our CC still remains really high. You know, again, except for this one small area along the Minnesota-Iowa border, it's generally 0.99 or higher, and our ZDR remains fairly low. So those two would be saying that this is all snow, but the KDP and the reflectivity may be saying that we're going through a transition here from snow to rain, and our, 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 our snowflakes are beginning to melt. If we go ahead to five minutes later, um, you see this area of very high, of higher and noisier KDP continues to expand to the northeast um, across from south of Sioux Falls to east of Sioux Falls now. You can see that our reflectivity continues to increase as well. It's generally 50 to 55 dBZ, which would likely indicate some melting. But our, our ZDR and our KDP continue to be relatively high, or well, high for CC, I'm sorry, and low for ZDR. And so these two screens would really, or panels, would indicate this is primarily all snow yet. But the left two panels would indicate that there is certainly a lot of melting beginning to go on, at least at the edges of the flakes. If we go ahead to 1422Z, you can see, again, a large area of very high reflectivity just to the east of Sioux Falls. And now you're beginning to see the correlation coefficient and ZDR begin to change and become more indicative of mixed precipitation. But this is occurring a good 15 to 25 minutes later than we saw these, the changes in the KDP over the same area. And so you can see that the, the um, ZD, ZDR is now approaching you know, 0.51, and the CC has definitely fallen closer to 0 0.9 degrees. You can see another area with more somewhat modeled uh, picture in KDP um, in northwestern Iowa in the second circle I have. You can see that in that area, the CC has already begun to, to decrease in that area. So going ahead to 1426Z, um, pretty much the same thing we saw earlier. You can see the CC, lower CC is beginning to expand in area um, from what we saw five minutes earlier. And this green star here is a call, phone call we made. We were, we were curious what we were seeing with KDP, and we wanted to see if it was actually raining or snowing or whatever. And a call to the, it was actually the law enforcement, said that the precipitation had just changed over to rain um, in this area where the correlation coefficient had dropped. So that kind of verified what you're seeing, especially with the correlation coefficient and the, and the KDP, to be honest. Um, and you can see that there's small areas of ZDR has also risen. So, What's interesting is that this area of KDP, this very large area of KDP, co-located co with this area of very high reflectivity, 
are both telling us that you're going through a process where warmer air is beginning to melt the snow into rain, and it's giving you a lead time on that, in that situation. So going ahead 10 more minutes, and I'll, I'll go through these relatively fast now because they don't change too much. You get, continue to see the area of low correlation coefficient. You're now seeing higher ZDR, indicative of mixed precipitation. But notice the much larger area of higher KDP um, across northwestern Iowa, and again, coincident with our area of higher reflectivity. And finally, going ahead to, to 15Z, or just shy, 1456, you can see, again, our higher reflectivity along the Iowa and northwestern Iowa in this very modeled area of, of uh, KDP. And you see a lot more, lot more area of CC much lower as well. And you can see that um, we made one call in here between our two areas of lower CC where it was all snow, actually, heavy snow at the time. And then we also had a webcam image west of Worthington, Minnesota, and, it, and what we had been monitoring that image for, for about an hour. And at that point, we had noticed that the visibilities had gone up there. And while we couldn't tell if it was actually raining versus snowing, the idea that the, the visibilities increased with no change in the reflectivity, in fact, the reflectivity increased, gave us a pretty good idea that at worst it was rain mixed with snow. And it, was like, it may have been all rain at that point. And so what I found really neat is that the KDP, in this case, was able to give us a lot of you know, some lead time in terms of a now casting perspective and telling us that this transition was going to be occurring over time. So here's what, what I think is happening. And, and I shared it with the folks down at, at WDDB. And, and they seem to think that this is at least plausible. I'm not going to say this is definite. You need a lot more uh, cases. But around 14Z, as snowflakes began to melt, they began to collect water droplets on the edge of the flake. And so as a result, the KDP would begin to rise because it's sensing liquid versus ice. And um, the radar, but the radar is beginning to also be detect more water, essentially. And at the same time, of course, you see that. You see the reflectivity also increasing because, of course, water is more reflective than ice. And so you see the corresponding reflectivity go up into 40, 45, 50 dBZ. So the two together are, are co-located. But the correlation coefficient remains very high, I think, because the shape of the snowflake remains very much the same as it was before. You're only getting small droplets on the edges of the flake as it just begins to melt. You're not actually beginning to have the flake transform into a water droplet yet, because it's not completely melted. And so that's why the ZDR and the correlation coefficient don't react at that earlier time. Then around 1430Z, we see the area of KDP increase in the area of KDP that's more modeled or higher. And that's indicative that snowflakes are continuing to melt, and more water is continuing to collect on the, on the snowflakes. And then as the reflectivity continues to increase, you're getting a sense that there's more and more water, more and more melting is going on. And you may also actually be getting aggregation of snowflakes you know, as they begin to stick together due to that, that melting on the edges. And then in the beginning, you also begin now to see the CC begin to decrease as well. And that's because maybe some snowflakes have all melted. You have some droplets and ice mixed together within the radar volume. So that gives you a lower cross-correlation coefficient. Um, and also, you're probably, you may actually be getting a rain-snow mix. And then the other possibility is because you get, you're getting different shapes of snowflakes, that they, they are aggregating more, so that you get these big blobs of, of snow falling. They begin to tumble more you may also be getting CC beginning to decrease because of that process as well. Um, and of course, we also see ZDR begin to increase because some areas of precipitation are becoming more of a rain-snow mix within the highest reflectivities. And finally, at 15Z, you see a slow, slow increase in KDP throughout the band. That's indicating that there's likely some melting, at least on the edges of snowflakes, throughout most of that snow band across the area. And then looking for the areas where correlation, co correlation coefficient is lower are the areas where you either have a mix of precipitation or because you're above the surface yet and it may be warmer below, you may go over to all rain. And then the relative uniform ZDR would indicate that most of the snow is still not completely melted, at least at the beam level. And that's, of course, one thing you have to consider is that you still have 1,000 feet or so 
of air below that you're not sampling with the radar. So again, this is just my hypothesis of what I think is going on. And unfortunately, we, we lack the details to really no, detailed reports to know for sure exactly what's happening outside of those few calls that we did make. But the reports we did get did seem to indicate that this did somehow have some value in giving you a, a 15 to 30 minute heads up that the snow or ice was beginning to melt at, low, at 0 0.5 degrees and that you may be about to change over to rain or if it were colder, freezing rain at the surface. But I really think that what we need is more cases and more detailed precipitation reports that will help us verify this utility of KDP in identifying these changeovers from ice to snow. So that's really just all I've got. It's, like I said, it's really short. Um, I just wanted to share it with everybody, maybe get more people looking at this so that maybe we can nail this down better and be able to use this with more utility as we go through this winter and into the next winter season. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Phil. Uh, that's uh, very interesting. Looks like it could give us a little extra lead time. Uh, are there any questions uh, on what Phil just presented? Hey, Phil, this is Ron, and I got a question to ask you. Why is it possible that this may not be sleet coming down instead of just rain? You go from snow to rain here, and you miss, you miss, you miss it in the transition stage. Is there a reason why sleet was not mentioned? Unless I'm oh, maybe... Go ahead. It, it could have been sleet. It, you could actually be sleet if it were below freezing at the surface as well. Um, the reason I didn't mention sleet here is because in this case it, we were near freezing at the surface or just above freezing at the surface. So it was mostly a, a, rain, a snow to rain transition for us. But yeah, if you, were, if, you know, if you were just barely above freezing, I think you might see the same thing where it would be modeled, but then if it fell below freezing, below the radar beam, um, so that the, the water droplet, water slash ice droplet could refreeze back to sleet, I think that's very possible. Okay, thanks, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And also, my, uh, Wes has a question too. Hey, Phil, this is Wes. I got, you know, I've seen several times, uh, especially up in Wisconsin and Chicago years ago, where we get um, the, the reflectivity shows uh, bands getting very hot. And in a rain situation, a very cold rain situation, we transition over to very heavy snow. You know, as you increase the rate of precipitation, it just cools the atmosphere enough to where you can get snow all the way to the surface. But this seems like it's exactly the opposite process where we're going from a cold precipitation, you know, snow, to a, a melting. And I'm just wondering, I can't figure that out with regard to, is it an effective process? Or what do you theorize as to how you're getting this isolated area of warmer temps to melt that snow? What, what I think is happening is that I don't think there's a, so much a change in vertical motion or evaporative cooling that's resulting in the, the hot looking radar or the higher reflectivities. Um, I think what's happening is if you, this was, since it was May, even though we were cloudy, you're starting to warm from the surface a lot, you know, from the surface through the lower atmosphere. And so rather than see a change in intensity, which I think would, is what happens a lot of times, you know, what we see a lot of times when you see it go the opposite way, um, what I think we're seeing in this case is that we're seeing the lower atmosphere begin to warm. And as the warm, lower atmosphere begins to warm, you're seeing the, the snowflakes begin to start melting. Um, and so rather than it being a change in intensity, we're seeing a change in the thermal structure of the atmosphere. And, um, and then as those flakes continue to melt, and if they melt on the edges of the flakes and they're relatively big flakes, you get that increased reflectivity, so you, it gives you that hotter or that well, essentially a bright band looking appearance to it. Um, and then as, a, as it continues to warm more and more, in the lower atmosphere, you know, a degree or two, it changes over to all rain. That's my guess as to what's happening. So it's a little bit, bit different process than, than what you described, Wes, which is probably more of a change in vertical motion and it re intensity rates. I think in this case, the intensity was probably not changing very much. It was more just a change in the thermal structure of the atmosphere. Thanks, Phil. Any other uh, thoughts, questions, comments uh, on this? OK. Uh, Phil, thank you very much for uh, putting this together and presenting it today. I sure appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome.
And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us. And we'll see you soon. There will be a survey link also for those on GoToMeeting. Bye-bye.